Good morning, YouTube. It's Tyler from ZipGrow, and we're here in our new research farm as it's being built. And we wanted to go over some indoor farm considerations when you're designing your farm. Some tips and tricks and just ideas to think of when you're coming up with a layout of how to design your indoor farm for best workflow and how to set you up for the most successful farm as possible. One of the first things you definitely want to consider when building your farm is obviously the layout. You want to think about workflow, where your system is going to be, what type of system you're using, and where you need to harvest, plant, and clean out your crop. Um, typically, for a lot of food safety rules, there's a lot of requirements here, and it's very important to incorporate food safety into that conversation from the beginning to save you a lot of headaches down the road when redesigning the room. One of the key things we always recommend for an indoor farm is having a clean room or a vestibule. Uh, this is just a section of your room with two sets of doors uh, that breaks both the temperature differences um, and humidity differences coming into the room, as well as as a way to transfer into a lab coat or boots to prevent any pests from moving into your farms or any pathogens, as well as to make sure you can log and track who's entering and exiting your farm. Another major consideration when you're designing your farm is the water flow into your farm, as well as drainage and all the water considerations, really. Um, having high enough pressure in your farm is very important if you're in a shared unit or a warehouse building. Sometimes the water pressure when you're first there will be very high, but if other units are using water, it'll drop off significantly. This is very important because we always recommend a reverse osmosis unit or an RO unit in your farm. Uh, this brings the EC levels down low enough that you can fertilize properly and measure your water EC uh, accurately and grow the healthiest crop possible. Part of this is that RO units require a very high pressure to work effectively and to make sure the membranes get the most value um, when you're changing them out. So one of the things you want to consider is that a lot of RO units require PSI of 45, 50 PSI, sometimes 60 or higher. That's not always possible through city water, so you may need a booster pump or any way of increasing the pressure of your water in their farm. Another thing to consider is floor drains. So um, in your farm, when you're washing uh, produce, when you're washing out your towers, if you want to pressure wash or clean anything, it's always nice to have a floor drain in the farm. It saves you a lot of time down the road cleaning up water and mopping or wet vacuuming anything off the floor. Um, it's also super helpful with your RO. You can drain the waistline from your RO into there. Um, you can drain your reservoir into there and it helps uh, save a lot of time and labor down the road. So it's always worth spending the extra money to incorporate a floor drain into your farm. Another thing to consider is what is going on your floor. Here in the zip farm, we actually ground down the floor and applied an epoxy coating. Um, epoxy is typically um, fairly expensive compared to floor paints or other treatments, but you get what you pay for. And even getting higher quality epoxy is sometimes worth it to uh, waterproof your floor, protect it, and it makes cleaning and disinfecting a lot easier down the road. And sometimes you can get epoxy floors with pigments like titanium dioxide, which help reflect the light and improve the quality of the light in your room uh, reflecting onto your crop. Another major consideration is uh, your power supply. Uh, oftentimes if we're dealing with an indoor farm there's a lot of LED lights and as much as LEDs are a lot more efficient than traditional high pressure sodium or, or fluorescent tubes they still require a lot of power to grow your crop. Um, so as a result you want to make sure you plan out your uh, you know power properly make sure you have enough power in the building to power things. Oftentimes in industrial settings, it's more efficient to use a three-phase power. Um, this ties in onto not only your lights, but also dehumidification and your HVAC um, and air handling units. When sizing out your HVAC units, it's important to consider a large enough HVAC. Oftentimes growers undersize their HVAC and don't um, take into consideration how much heat load your lights and other equipment is, is supplying. Uh, and a quick and easy way to roughly calculate what you're gonna need in terms of HVAC is to multiply the total wattage of the room. So that's pumps, lights, fans, everything that's incorporated in your room times 3.41. Um, that will give you a very rough BTU measurement per hour that you need to keep your room at an acceptable level for an indoor grow. Another thing to consider in your farm is how you're gonna control your HVAC, your dehumidification, your lighting, and other variables in your farm, such as your fans and recirculation fans. Um, it's quite often required to have an environmental controller or um, some kind of building automation system to control these factors and make sure they're running as efficiently as possible. Uh, systems like HVAC often have stages and can be much more efficient if used in stage systems. Uh, we offer the Atom controlling unit. Uh, there are other controlling units out there that are fantastic. And uh, these will give you versatility in terms of controlling your environmental conditions, as well as redundancies and notifications and you know, fail-safes if anything happens in the middle of the night. 
And I know I mentioned this already, but it's important to consider a workflow. Think about what style of system you're using and how you're going to have to harvest and package these products to get them out the door. In some farms, we've seen uh, things such as vinyl flaps through a hole in the wall so that produce can be uh, brought out of the building into a cooler without actually leaving the farm and preventing any pests from entering. Um, another thing to consider is you know, the style system you're using, how it needs to be harvested. When we're working with towers, uh, quite often we like to roll the racks to a separate area, take the towers down, harvest them in that area, and then put them back again. What this allows us to do is to use a pressure washer in that separate area and not affect the humidity and the temperature in our grow facility and keep our grow room extra clean and keep the mess to one area where there is a floor drain. Uh, these are all things you want to consider when you design your farm. Obviously this is not everything that goes into designing an indoor farm and there's lots of great tips and tricks out there so if anyone has any suggestions we'd love for you to reach them in the comments. If you have questions we'll, uh, we'll set up a second video and address some of those questions and go over some of these design considerations and hopefully we can have an updated video with this farm completed soon enough and show you everything that we've done in here. Thanks and always remember to like, comment, subscribe.